Welcome to The Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We pray that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now, here's a message from Pastor Dan Roth. Tonight, get your Bibles out and go with me to the book of John, Gospel of John. We're going to be in John chapter 4 to start out. And tonight, the title of the message is The Constant Supply of the Spirit. I believe that God wants us to have a consistent and constant relationship with Him, but also flow of energy and power from Him. I believe that God wants every area and every part of our life saturated with His presence and His power. Imagine for a second your life full. Think about it. Every area of your life absolutely full, full of love. What if every moment of every day you were just in love? You say, well, is that possible, Pastor? You know, I, I've had that, that, that butterflies, you know, when I was a teenager. I remember love at first sight and that sort of a thing. And, and when I met my husband or wife, you know, there was that pitter-patter and, 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 you know, but, uh, you know, you have to work at that. And that's, that's something. But imagine your life if it wasn't just romantic love, but what if you had a love for your spouse that, that, that went beyond that? What if you had a love for your children that went beyond behavior? What if you had a love for your coworkers and your boss that just, uh, just went beyond your understanding? And as you looked at people, you looked at them through the lens of love. When you saw people on the street, your heart just cried out for them and you wanted them to be saved. Why? Because you were just so in love with them. Imagine a full life of love. Imagine a life of, that's full of knowledge and understanding and wisdom. Well, what if it, it was just all the mysteries were unlocked to you, that as you, you were going about your day and as you were going and, and, and looking at what you were to do and planning for the future and, and, and what I'm going to do today and managing your time and ruling over your finances and, and, and your home and everything that you did, what if you had a full life of all of the knowledge, all of the wisdom, all of the direction that you ever needed? Well, what about power? What if uh, you had a full life of power? What if everything that you did, you were successful and, and you were just, you had the strength and, and, and you were just able to go out and conquer the world, do whatever it is that you needed to do, uh, go and be what it is that God has called you to be. What if you had a full life of power? Well, tonight, I've got good news for you because that's the kind of life that God wants us to live. You say, Pastor, that sounds like you're, you're reaching for the stars. Oh, absolutely, but guess what? I'm reaching higher. I'm reaching up into heaven itself. See, because God has promises in His Word, and God has a fullness that He has promised to us from the Bible, that He has promised to all believers. Now, we don't walk in it, and we don't experience it. Why? Because maybe we haven't been taught. Why? Because maybe there's something, an element that's missing in our lives. Now let me show you the path to this fullness, okay? It starts with salvation. That's why before I even got into the message tonight, I wanted to, to give an altar call and give people the opportunity to give their hearts and lives to Jesus Christ. Because without that, you're not going anywhere. Without being saved, born again, headed for heaven, then, then, then it doesn't work. It's just not going to happen. You have no hope. There is nothing uh, that you can do in your own power and strength. Yes, people out there in the world, they're building up wealth. They're building up fame. They're building up fortune. And when they die, it will die with them. Are you listening? See, it's a hopeless existence. All that they built up is going to go to someone else. And yet, if you've given your heart and life to Jesus Christ, now you have a more greater and enduring uh, treasure that's now awaiting you in heaven. There is a reward that awaits you. His name is Jesus. He's there in heaven, ready to give entrance and welcome you with open arms and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And for eternity now, you have purpose. You have hope. You have a future. You have a destiny. John chapter 4 I had you turn there in verse number 13. Jesus is speaking to a woman who was in quite a situation in life. This was a castaway. This was a throwaway, if you will. This was an outcast. This was a woman who was sleeping around. A woman who uh, didn't have real relationships. Her life was filled with what the world now, even in our society today, would call love, but was empty and void of any real love. She'd had five husbands, and the man that she was with was not her own. And so here she was, bouncing from bed to bed, from relationship to relationship, hopeless, and an outcast. Here she is in the middle of the day drawing water. That wasn't when people went to draw water. They went in the cool of the day. Why? They didn't want to be out there at that time. Why was she there alone? Because she didn't want to be seen. Because she was ashamed. 
And now here's Jesus sitting by the well, and he says, give me a drink of water. And she says, um, excuse me, you talking to me? No, I'm paraphrasing now. And he says, yes. And she says, how can you, who is a Jew, have any dealings with me, a, a woman and a Samaritan? See, it just, Samaritans were half-breeds. They were hated by the Jews. Jews wouldn't even travel through their land. They would go around. So here's a Jew speaking to a Samaritan. She's shocked about it. And they start having a conversation. She starts realizing some things about him. Take a look at what Jesus says to her in John, the fourth chapter, verse number 13 and verse number 14. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. So he starts to give her a natural example of a spiritual principle. Next verse he says, But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So it starts with our salvation. See, Jesus says, I am the one who's going to fill your life. I'm the one who's going to satisfy you. Now up here on the stage, I want you to notice we've got uh, the cart from this morning once again. This time we don't have any plants on it, but we've got some, some pitchers and cups, that sort of thing. I have here a cup. This cup represents our life, okay? This cup right now, completely empty, all right? And that's our life before Christ, empty, just dry, void of purpose without anything inside of it. And when Jesus says, the water that I shall give him, they will never thirst. And it will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. See, when you get saved, some of you this tonight, this happened to you just now. Now all of a sudden, Jesus comes and he fills you. Fills you with living water. Now the fountain of life, the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you. Now that's you. Now you have purpose. Now you're useful. Now you're filled. Your life is filled. Okay? So it starts with salvation. Now I'm going to put this to the side. We'll come back to this in a moment. And we'll see what's going on for our lives tonight as we encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit. It starts with our salvation. But it continues through Holy Spirit baptism. Now I just dropped a term on you that some of you guys in this place never heard before in your life. And even myself, growing up a good little conservative boy in all the different churches that I grew up in, I did not understand this principle. But there is a water baptism that may, maybe you've heard of, and basically baptism means submersion, okay? And water baptism is something that we do as Christians after we've given our heart and life to Jesus, and we follow his example. Jesus was baptized in water. It signified that you are being buried with Christ, you're going under that water, you're cleansed of all of the filthiness of the flesh, and you come up now from that old man that died, that old man is now dead and buried and gone, and now you're coming up out of the waters in newness of life. Holy Spirit baptism is different in this sense, because John uh, the Baptist told his disciples, I indeed baptize you with water, but there is one coming who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So there is a Holy Spirit baptism or a Holy Spirit submersion that takes place in our lives. Let's take a look at it in John the 7th chapter. Jesus spoke of it. And I want you to notice the difference in terminology that Jesus uses in John 7 from John 4. John 4, he talks about the waters will spring up on the inside, a fountain that springs up into everlasting life. Now he changes his terminology in John the 7th chapter, verse number 37 through verse number 39. John chapter 7, verse number 37 says this, On the last day, that great day of the feast, so here's the feast in Jerusalem, they're celebrating, Jesus stands up and he cries out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Verse 38, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now look at verse number 39. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, capital S on the word Spirit, the Holy Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now we know that when Jesus resurrected, he came to the disciples inside of the room, right? And he came and he breathed on them. John chapter 20 it says that Jesus breathed on them and he spoke to them saying, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? But then in Luke, chapter 20, he says, I want you to tarry or wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit has come upon you. 
So when Jesus breathed on the disciples, here once again we have that they were now filled with the Holy Spirit, received the Holy Spirit. They received that fountain. Right? But he says, I want you to wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon you in Jerusalem. Then you fast forward to the book of Acts, and right before he leaves, he says that when he goes to the Father, that they will be endued with power from on high, and that they will be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost ends of the earth. So he says, you're going to receive power, and that word power is the word dunamis, really is where we get our term dynamite. There is an explosive force that's going to come upon you that's going to empower you as a believer to live a full life, a full life of love, a full life of wisdom, a full life of direction, a full life of the power and the grace of God, strength for each new day, that you're going to be able to go out and do great things for God, and that is the Holy Spirit fullness now that comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Acts, the second chapter, you remember the story. They're all in the upper room praying. A great mighty wind comes rushing in. Tongues of fire divided among them, and they land on each one of them. They start to speak in, in unknown tongues to them, but they rush out into the streets of Jerusalem. They're just filled with power, and they're speaking in unknown languages, and people hear the glory of God in their own language, and they say, these men are drunk. Peter stands up and he says, no, this was the promise. This was what, what Jesus was talking about in the book of Luke, that, that we should wait until the power comes out and on, my, on, on all flesh I will pour my spirit, on your young men and your maidens, and they shall prophesy and speak with new tongues. The book of Isaiah, with stammering lips, they will speak. And that's what was happening. So we see that when you are now baptized, right, and so let's say this is the spirit of God, now you are completely submerged in the spirit of God. Now you are filled on the inside, right? Because this cup is filled, right? The, the little cup on the inside still is full of water. Is that correct? Yes. But now you are baptized. You are completely submerged inside and out now. You are completely saturated and surrounded with the Spirit of God. Everybody's got that picture? But see, that's only part of it. Because in the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the Apostle Paul writes to the Ephesian church and he says, don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the Spirit of God. Now that word be filled is a progressive word. It's an ongoing word. It really means be being filled. See, God wants us to be saturated, to be completely enveloped by His Spirit. But God says, you know what? There's times in life where you pour out. Times in life where you get dry. Times in life where maybe uh, you, you haven't gone to Jesus. You've been going to your own strength. You've been going to your own knowledge. And, and, and you're getting poured out. And God says, if you come to me, you'll never thirst again. It will spring up into everlasting life. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. See, God wants us to be being filled. And so God is saying, I want you now to be being filled. It needs to be a continuous thing where you are... Enveloped, saturated, surrounded, and poured out by the Holy Spirit. That's the type of life that God wants us to live as believers. How does that happen? How does that happen? Simply it happens by faith. We receive it by faith. We've been talking about this on Sunday mornings, and I, I just haven't been able to get faith ever since we got back into the series out of my heart. You know, it's been a refreshing thing for me. We receive by faith. See, our salvation is show and tell for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You remember that when we talked about the show and tell that God gives us? How you start is how you will continue. And so if you are going to receive this great gift of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, it's the same way as your salvation. Tonight, some of you guys had show and tell right where you're at in your seats. Why? Because you heard the word of God. You believed it and accepted it as true that if you would believe in the Lord and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, given him all of your heart and all of your life, that you would be saved. In the same way for all of us in this place that are believers, now, if you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that Jesus is the baptizer. And that if we hear the word of God, that we can have this Holy Spirit fullness in life. This baptism, this power, this love wash, this, this, this wash of the wisdom and the knowledge and the greatness of God. Then, then, then you just have to believe and you will receive it. Tonight, I want to pray for people that are going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Before we do that, I want to show you a couple of scriptures and show this to you in the Word of God. Go with me to the book of Galatians. Galatians, the third chapter. You're there in John. Now switch over to the book of Galatians, the third chapter. There's a couple of verses that I want to take a look at. Galatians chapter 3. 
Verse number two, the apostle writes, and he says, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Now, the answer is obvious that they didn't receive by the works of the law because they had done that later on. They had gone back to the Old Covenant, the Old Testament works of the law. But he says, you didn't receive the Spirit. Now, notice he says, receive the Spirit. I believe that he's talking about your salvation. Did you receive your salvation? Did you receive the Spirit on the inside of you by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Obviously, they heard the gospel preached, and they received the Spirit of God by faith. Okay? Now, look at verse number 5. After saying, you guys have been doing the wrong thing, you guys are acting foolish, you guys are going back to the old ways, and that's not where you need to be. Verse 5, therefore he who supplies the Spirit to you. Notice the supply. He who supplies. It's a continual, constant thing. There is a river that's running. There is an outpouring that is pouring out. He who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Once again, the answer is open and clear. It is not by the works of the law. It is by the hearing of faith. Tonight, I believe that God wants to do some great and mighty things among us. And it's not because the preacher coerced you or shook you or spat on you or, or you know, did anything. Listen, I'm not going to touch any of you guys tonight, okay? Just to show you that it's not anything to do with, oh, that Pastor Dan, man, he's a smooth, slick talker, and, you know, him and his, you know, thing, he did it, and, and he made me do it, you know, and I'm such a fool for listening to him. Listen, I'm not going to do nothing, okay? You hear the word, and you either receive it and accept it as true, because I've shown it to you in the word. In the Bible, talks about this all through the Bible. I told you about the, the, the apostles, right? Jesus breathed on them, then they received the Spirit. Philip went and preached Christ in Samaria. They believed in the Lord. They were baptized. And then the apostles went and laid hands on them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Spirit. Prophesied. Spoke in tongues. Gifts. Healings. All sorts of miracles and signs and wonders. They found disciples in Ephesus. The apostle Paul. Did you receive the Spirit? They said, we didn't even know there was a Spirit. So he preaches Jesus to them. They are baptized in water. And then he lays hands on them. And they speak with tongues and prophesy. All throughout the Bible. You can either accept it or reject it your call, your choice. But tonight, if you've heard the word and you're believing and you're saying, yeah, I want that power. I, I want to have that love in my, I want to be filled with love. I want to just love everyone with the love of God flowing in and through me. I, I want to have that wisdom and that knowledge. I want the Holy Spirit to be guiding me and directing me and showing me and opening the scriptures and the word to me. I, I really want that for my life. I, you know, I really want that power. I want to be filled with that dynamite, explosive power for service, for ministry, to be a witness, to go and tell someone about Jesus. See, it made all the difference. It took the shivering, shaking apostles who were knocking their knees just weeks and days before now to standing up and boldly proclaiming the Word of God. What made the difference was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to do things a little bit different tonight. Before we do anything else, I believe that those that have come here tonight and you haven't yet given God all of your heart, you haven't yet given God all of your life. See, it's one thing to know about God to know about church, to be able to talk the right talk, look the part, come into church and lift your hands and sing along. But it's quite another thing to have given God all of your heart and to give God all of your life. Jesus said it like this. He said, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. No other way you're going to get to heaven. You must be born again. You can't get to heaven by being good. You can be as good as good can be. And yet, still not going to make it. Because the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Not going to make it there based on your good works. Because the standard to get into heaven based on good works is perfection. The only one who is perfect, well, his name is Jesus. You're not going to get to heaven because you were raised in church or your parents told you you were a Christian growing up or because you attended religious classes, wore religious jewelry, or had a belt buckle that said Jesus. Not going to get to heaven by any of those ways. Because Jesus said you must be born again.
Not going to get to heaven because you're not some other religion or because you were born in America. America is not, contrary to what many people think, the Christian nation. And just because you're born in America, you get to go to heaven. God, God's not lumping people into categories by default. Well, I guess they're not something else, so they're born here, so I guess they get to go to heaven. It doesn't work like that. You must be born again. Not going to get to heaven based on your church attendance. You can sit in church and call yourself a Christian as much as you want, but it doesn't make you a Christian. Any more than sitting in your garage calling yourself a car makes you a car. It doesn't work like that. You must be born again. And you're not going to get to heaven based on your involvement in church. Sometimes people think, well, I sang in the choir, I helped out, carried the pastor's Bible, made decisions in my last church. People thought of me as a leader. I, I taught in the Bible classes, even got a membership card to that church. Doesn't that mean I get to go to heaven? Listen, nowhere in the Bible does it say that your church involvement will get you into heaven. It says you must be born again. Sometimes people think, well, you know, I know God. Doesn't that mean that I'm a Christian? Do you know that nowhere in the Bible does it say just know who God is and that gets you into heaven? Isn't that shocking? We would think, man, I, if, as long as I know God and celebrate Christmas and Easter, can quote scriptures or something like that, that, that gets me right with God. And yet Jesus didn't say just know who God is. He said you must be born again. In fact, if you'd read your Bible, you know the Bible records that demons believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They're not Christians. The Bible says the devil himself knows who Jesus is and can quote scriptures out of his mouth, and yet that doesn't qualify him for heaven. So everybody look up here at me for a second. This is not about what you have in your head. It's not about having mental assent towards God, knowing who Jesus is, and that gets you right with God. But rather, this is about your heart. What does being born again mean? I know our society's made a mockery out of it. They raked it through the coals and made it out to be some weirdo, goofy thing. But listen, this is not about what society, movies, Hollywood, television, books, or the internet say. This is about what the Bible has to say. What does being born again really mean from the Bible? Well, from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, it's always meant the same thing. It means you've given God all of your heart and that you've given God all of your life. It's just that simple. It's all or nothing with Jesus. Remember how we started? Have you given God all of your heart? Have you given God all of your life? See, that's what God is after. Everything. Jesus was speaking to a church in the last book of the Bible, book of Revelation, and he says, when I come, I want to find you hot or I want to find you cold because if I find you lukewarm, I will vomit you from my mouth. Now, those are pretty gross graphic words from the mouth of Jesus. What's he saying? Lukewarm, what's that all about? Well, it's little in, little out. Little up, little down, little token prayer every now and again. An occasional church attendance. God is something in your life, but he's not everything. You're not opposed to God, but you're not wholehearted for God. Listen, if that's your relationship with Jesus, you're not going to make it. How do I know that? Because only people that are not real Christians will be ejected and rejected from the body of Christ. Sorry to tell you, not all roads lead to heaven. Hell is very real, and you're not going to get out of it by ignoring it. Jesus spoke about it. Let's make sure today that you're headed for heaven. And the only way to do that is that you must be born again. In a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do just that. I'm going to count to three just like this. I'm going to go one, two, three. And when I say three, I'm going to pop my hands together. Bang. When you hear the sound of my hands popping together just like that, bang. That's your opportunity to raise your hand. What you're doing by the raising of your hand is you're saying, I want to give God all my heart. I want to give God all my life. I want to be born again, headed for heaven, denying my presence in hell. I'll see your hand go up. I'll count it. You put it right back down. You say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. Pastor, time out. If I raise my hand, I'll be embarrassed. Yeah, you might be. Let's get over that embarrassment tonight. Why? Because think of the trade-off. Isn't it better to be embarrassed for a moment than it is to end up in hell forever and ever and ever and ever? No one would make that trade. And yet right now, your flesh and securities are trying to talk you out of it. The devil's whispering in your ear trying to push you out of this. That's why I'm coming on strong trying to push you into this because this will be the best decision of your entire life. And come on, no one would make that trade a moment of possible embarrassment for an eternity away from God. Come on. It's not you. You can do that in a safe and friendly place. And guess what? Tonight, I'm going to make it easy on you. Couldn't get any easier. I'm going to pray with you right in your seats because we have some things that we want to do tonight. And so I want to make sure before we get to those things that your heart is right with God because without this, none of what we're talking about tonight is going to make any sense and it's not going to apply in your life. This is the first place that you have to start is giving God all of your heart 
and giving God all of your life. You say, Pastor, well, wait a second. Can I just, you know, clean up my life a little bit and, and then come back? Listen, God doesn't want to just wipe the slate clean. He wants to give you a brand new slate. He doesn't want to just, you know, clean up your act and then, then, uh, then you're, you qualify. No, God is the one who qualifies you and he gives you a brand new life. There's an exchange that's going to take place. Your old life for his new life. That old man's going to die and be gone and now you're going to live a new life in Christ. Tonight, it starts by simply raising your hand and then I will pray with you to receive Jesus right there in your seats. Couldn't get any easier. So who should raise their hand in a moment? If you've been running from God instead of to God, I'm speaking to you. Who should raise their hand if you're not sure about your salvation? Tonight, come on, make sure. Who should raise their hand if you've never done this, never said yes to Jesus, given him all of your heart and all of your life? Come on, I'm talking to you. Or finally, who should raise their hand if you're lukewarm in this place? You know that's the condition of your heart when I described it. Get ready to get your hand up. All across this auditorium, back in the family rooms, wherever you're at, watching by television in the foyer or the Love Rock Cafe or online across the nation and around the world, get ready to get your hand up. God sees, and then I'm going to pray with you right where you're at as well to receive Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior. Come on, Jesus went to the cross, beaten, bloody, public spectacle. Now will you give him all of your heart will you give them all of your life you must be born again if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven I'm going to count to three pop my hands together this is your time this is your moment of salvation get ready to get your hands up if you need to do this all together on the count of three here we go one two three let me see your hands just raise them up high for me if that's you thank you one two three four thank you five six got you seven got you over there who else today need to give God all your heart Need to give God all of your life. There's, is that a hand over? Um, uh, they're pointing this way, but I think that's a hand right there. Thank you, eight. God bless you guys, eight wise people. Nine, got you in the back over there. Uh, where else? Thank you, 10, got you right there. Anybody else real quick? 11, thank you. 12, got you over there. Anybody else? Give me a big wave if I don't see it. All right, I'm, uh, I got you over there. Thank you, 13, God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else real quick? Over here, I got you, thank you. Thank you, about 13 wise people. Anybody else real quick? I want to make sure that you're included in this prayer because I want to pray with you. And listen, couldn't get any easier. I didn't embarrass them, and I won't embarrass you. If you're sitting there wondering, should I do this? Let me answer that question for you. Yeah, you should. Come on, let's go for it tonight. Number 14, number 15, come on. You're sitting there waiting, wondering if you should do this. Come on, let's go tonight. Thank you, number 14. God bless you. Who else? Number 15, come on. You're sitting there, and you were waiting. Anybody else real quick? Number 15, come on, just pop it up high for me. Anybody else back there? Is there someone back there? All right, anybody else real quick? Number number 15, there you are. I knew you were out there. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, let's do this. Let's all stand in the presence of the Lord. Those of you that raised your hand, or if you should have raised your hand but you didn't, it's not too late, because I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Okay, those of you that raise your hand, maybe in the foyer, the Love Rock Cafe, online if you're watching, on your computer, or on your phone, wherever you're at, get ready to receive Jesus. We're going to pray a prayer together right now. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I want you to say this prayer out loud if you have the ability. I'm going to go in short phrases, all right? If you trip up on some words, that's okay. It's not about the words. It's about the heart, okay? Your words are going to follow your heart right now. You're going to give God all your heart and all of your life. You're going to be born again, brand new on the inside, okay? So let's all bow our heads. Let's close our eyes and say this out loud together with me. Say, Father God. Oh, come on, everybody. Let's join in with them and encourage them, especially if you raised your hand. Say, Father God, I come to you now in the name of Jesus, and I give you all of my heart and all of my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me of my sin. And may I become brand new, born again, a Christian, headed for heaven, denying my presence in hell from this day on. Thank you, Jesus. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up a great big shout of praise to the Lord. Woo! Yeah! Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you 
in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent him for me and that he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. If this message spoke to you, please share it with us. We'd love to hear from you. You can find more information at www.rockchurch.com.